Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Deep Rag. Vocal Deep Ragging is asking yourself questions and then questioning your answers. I also keep a defrag journal where I write out the questions in the journal and then I answer them. I argue with myself. I sit there and I feel good or bad. I go through the emotional exchanges. Same thing with the vocal defrag. But what I love most about the vocal defrag is that you're preserving your inflection, the pitch, the volume, the tone. And I strongly suggest that you do that with your smartphone. Start using it as a great tool for you to share your personal thoughts, your visions, things that are moving through you. Come back and just listen to it. Ask the questions and then question the answers. This is vocal defragging. I've been hit today with several different angles of why you should be really listening to your heart. I did a commercial for Spotify today that was based on one thing, not podcasting in the way that people get on there to tell their jokes or they do their famous people interviews or, or just get in there and just joke, you know, joke around with their friends or to basically just talk about a product. My angle today was based 100% on the advertiser. Because I was reminded that the reason why I got into podcasting in 2012 was because I was trying to design a platform for advertisers who were spending a boatload of money for 30-second and 60-second commercials. And I thought podcasting would be such a great angle to take our advertisers to. And in 2012, that big old broadcasting company looked at me and said, yeah, I don't get it, man. I don't get what you're doing, but keep trying. And so I kept trying. And the more I tried, the more I got into those famous people interviews and doing things like we're doing right now. But at the same time, I documented something inside another journal that I keep, which is called Stream Thinking. And it wanted to know why I was doing this storytelling of this forest, this tiny forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. And the answer that I came up with was, was kind of odd, because it was based on one thing. When I'm gone, all of the energy that the forest and I shared will be gone as well. And the forest has been speaking so loudly to me over the past couple of weeks that it says, write the story. If you don't write the story, then no one will know of what happened here in 1992 growing forward. Because what's going to happen to my daily writing? If I know my wife, she's probably going to get rid of the daily writing at the time of my passing because it takes up a lot of room in many, many protective boxes. So I have felt it in my heart for the past couple of weeks. Share the story of this forest. I did a fourth episode this morning, and I'm still going, what the hell are you doing? So I bring this to you. When you get into those moments of, what the hell am I doing? How far do you take that? Do you lean into it even more because you're trying to locate the real source of the energy? What the hell are you doing? My dad used to ask me that question all the time. He'd walk into my room. He'd walk out into the chicken hut with me. Well, in the chicken hut, I was out there with a garden hose, and I was singing in one end, and on the other end, it was going into my ear because it created an echo. What the hell was I doing? I was singing. I was being creative. I I like to hear that little delay because it made me sound like I was live in concert. What the hell are you doing? How far do you push yourself before you finally say, well, what the hell I was doing is exactly that. It was what I was doing and there was no payoff. And I often wonder about those payoffs. What is it that we're truly looking for when we set out to accomplish something and it doesn't reach that one particular level? I get really super jealous of these carpenters and these construction workers that follow these these gigantic maps. This is the way it's supposed to be, this highway, this house. But does it really achieve that level? I mean, we may not see it because we're not trained to see it. I call them Easter eggs at the grocery store. I can be walking through that store and see something that's completely out of place, but a billion people have walked by and have done nothing about it. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing in your life that you see that you're feeling energy from, and yet the only thing that's happening is you? Nobody else is participating, and if they were, it might be a judgment call. But that in itself serves as fuel in the way of, well, should I continue doing this or what? I mean, a guy walking through a forest speaking into a telephone. What the hell are you doing? 
Well, it's called vocal defragging. Vocal defragging came to me because of a breakdown. I was putting it on paper, but then I was talking to all of these actors and musicians and artists, and they said, well, what is vocal defragging? I want to participate with it. I couldn't put my journals out there because what do my journals have to do with you? So therefore, we created vocal defragging in a way of saying, what the hell are you doing? Why the hell are you doing it? Do you really need to be doing it? Is there a payoff or do you really want a payoff? Sometimes we do things to do, to find our place, to be in a place of acceptance by way of saying, yeah, I did it. What do you want to do about it? Okay, I'll do it again. For instance, like the day that I became an artist on canvas was a total accident. It was because I spilled ink on my daily writing and it took the shape of a perfect wine glass. To this day, when I see that picture or that painting, I go, what the hell was I thinking? Most people would rip it out of the journal and throw it away, but no, I had to preserve it because it changed my life forever. So in asking, what the hell are you doing? Maybe we should say, what the hell would you like to be doing? And how much time and energy you're going to place into it? We've all been convinced that there has to be a return on the investment. I get it. That's business. I've talked with directors. In fact, the director of the new John Travolta movie, Mobland. We talked about the business side of making movies. We've talked about the business side of a grocery store. I get it. There's got to be some sort of return on the investment. But the situation is based on one more thing. You, yourself, and the energy that you have, and how much of it are you willing to spend in order to do what the hell you want to do? When my wife retired from being a school teacher, the woman at the Social Security office said, Hey, welcome to a new life. You now have the power of choice. I remember listening to that phone conversation, and I was moved by it just like I was moved by the the ink spilling on the piece of paper that took the shape of a wine glass. Moved. Because welcome to the power of choice. At that moment is when I said, I will never work another job again. That's my choice. See, I do have an essential job. I do do things with the movie promotion company. I do do things with my mobile DJ service. But it's not a job. It's a choice. I make a choice to do that. And changing my mindset of what the hell am I doing, it really gives me a better opportunity to enjoy the love that is shared in the things that I'm doing. Yeah, being at a grocery store, what a pain in the ass, right? Not really. There's a lot of stories there. There's a lot of everyday average people combined with rich ass people, famous people, unknown people, old people, young people. They're all coming into this place and they've all got something to share. And if you take the time to listen, my God, the return on the investment is just mind blowing because you see for yourself what a true community is. It's not like going to a church. I love me some church, okay? But church people, they dress up and they put on their little candy-coated plastic bathroom mirror smiles. They bring their little Bible. They do things like that. But it's not sharing the reality. Now, the moment they get in their car after the preacher man has talked, that's when reality sets in. But at a grocery store, there's reality there. What the hell are you doing? I ask myself that every time I go to this grocery store. What the hell are you doing? I'm being with my community. I'm charging up my batteries as a writer, as a creative person. I'm like hanging out with other people that are also creative. They're just not talking about it. I'm listening to their stories. I'm watching them come into the store at oddball hours. And then when I say something to them, they're going, whoa, you actually noticed that I came in here at this time? Yeah. Yeah, I really did. So on this episode of Vocal Defrag, I really do want you to ask the question, what the hell are you doing? And in the moments of trying to come up with an answer, the goal is to find yourself in a place of discovery as well as recovery. Because your life is going to get stronger when you find yourself being more truthful with yourself instead of buying things to cover things up. Instead of going on to social media and finding yourself in that place of, well, if I say this, I've released all my steam. Hey, look, if there's some things that are pissing you off in the world, I get it. You're not supposed to talk about politics. You're not supposed to talk about religion. I get it. I get it. I get it. Then put it in a defrag journal. Not necessarily a vocal journal, because there's a lot of stuff in the political world that you don't need to be saying because you're going to create a storm that's going to ruin a lot of relationships. Don't be doing that. What the hell are you doing? Ask the question. Question the answer. Find yourself in the mirror. I'm Arrow, and that's Focal Defrag.